In this video, we'll discuss the overall f-test in factorial analysis of variance. We'll look at the assumptions, the null and alternative hypothesis. We'll see how to calculate the test statistics for the main and interaction effects, determine the p-values, and how to interpret the results. We'll also see how to perform post hoc comparisons. Suppose we want to investigate the main effect of raw meat versus canned cat food, the main effect of portion control versus free feeding, and their interaction on cat health, rated on a scale from 0 to 10. Cats are randomly assigned to one of four conditions that vary in terms of diet and feeding pattern. First, we need to check the assumptions. These are the same as in one-way analysis of variance. The observations should be independent. In our case, random assignment takes care of this assumption. If the observations are dependent by design, involving repeated measurements or paired observations, we should use repeated measures analysis of variance. Second, the response variables should be normally distributed in each group. The histograms in our example look fairly normal. Analysis of variance is robust against minor violation of normality, and our samples are large enough with at least 10 observations in each group, so we don't have to consider using a nonparametric test. Thirdly, in analysis of variance, the variances need to be homogeneous, or the same. In our example, with unequal sample sizes, the largest variance is no more than twice the size of the smallest variance, so we'll proceed. We specify statistical hypotheses for each of the main and interaction effects. For each main effect, the null hypothesis states that the relevant marginal population means are equal. The alternative hypothesis states that at least one population mean differs from the rest. The interaction effect specifies that the difference between means on one factor are the same for each level of the other factor. So the differences in population mean health for raw meat and canned food are expected to be the same for cats fed in controlled portions compared to free-fed cats. If this is the case, the effect of diet is not influenced by feeding pattern. The alternative hypothesis is that the differences are unequal for the portion control and free-fed cats. For each effect, the test statistic f equals the between-group variance divided by the within-group variance. The within-group variance is the same for all effects. It's calculated by dividing the within, or error sum of squares, by the total number of observations minus the total number of groups. The between-group variance is calculated using the sums of squares relevant to the particular effect and dividing by the appropriate degrees of freedom. For main effects, this is the number of levels for a particular factor minus 1. For interaction effects, we take the number of levels for a factor minus 1, we do this for all factors, and multiply the results. Each f statistic is associated with two degrees of freedom. The error, denominator, or within degrees of freedom are the same for all effects. The numerator, or between degrees of freedom, depend on the effect. They're the values we use to divide the sums of squares by when we calculate the appropriate between group variances. The test statistic follows an f distribution with two degrees of freedom. We always start by inspecting the interaction effect. In our example, for the interaction between diet and feeding pattern, we find an f of 4.475, with 1 and 84 degrees of freedom. We look in the right tail of the distribution. With the significance level set at 0.05, using a table, we find the critical f value, with 1 and 60, rounding down from 84 degrees of freedom, is 4.0012. The observed f value exceeds this value, so we know the p-value is smaller than 0.05. Software provides an exact p-value of 0.0374. We can reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there is an interaction between diet and feeding pattern. If we perform pairwise tests or confidence interval for the simple effects using Chuki's correction for overall alpha, we see that a raw meat diet shows a significantly higher mean health score than canned food for both portion-controlled and free-fed cats. This effect of diet is stronger when cats are free-fed. The effect of raw meat is the same for portion-controlled and free-fed cats. However, the health rating of cats free-fed on canned food is significantly lower than the health rating of cats fed controlled portion of canned food. Since the effect of diet appears for both levels of feeding pattern, the main effect can be meaningfully interpreted. We've already compared the groups in a pairwise fashion, so interpretation of the main effects isn't really necessary, but let's look at them anyway. For the factor diet, we find an f of 36.986, with 1 and 84 degrees of freedom. A very high value, which is due to the fact that I generated the data myself. For feeding pattern, we find an f of 3.507, with 1 and 84 degrees of freedom. 
Using a table, we find the critical F value with 1 and 60 degrees of freedom is also 4.0012 for diet and feeding pattern, since they both happen to have the same numerator degrees of freedom as the interaction term. The observed F value exceeds the critical value for the main effect of diet, but not for the main effect of feeding pattern. Software provides an exact p-value of 0.0000003 for diet and 0.0646 for feeding pattern. P-values as tiny as the one for diet are usually reported as smaller than 0.001. We can reject the null hypothesis for the main effect of diet, but not for feeding pattern. When we ignore feeding pattern, the difference between raw meat and canned food is large enough to be significant, with cats fed on raw meat receiving a higher mean health score. When we ignore diet, the difference between portion control and free feeding is not quite large enough to be significant.